I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. It ain't that long till I'm back at the pond. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be a short one. I get a lot of questions about salted shrimp on my Facebook and Instagram page about how you, how you make salted shrimp. So I'm gonna actually demonstrate that. I'm also gonna show you a couple new rod and reel combos that I bought today uh, to replace the 12-footers since uh, they're toast and I hardly ever use the 12-footers because most of the time I use lures and spoons here lately. And that's what I prefer to do. So I'm going to show you, demonstrate how to, it, it's very, very simple to make salted shrimp. I ruined more mics than you can imagine out here. It's just crazy how many, how many mics I go through. So I, I, I was having problems with my audio, and I, thank God I had an extra one. Uh, but check out these birds, man. It's a lot of birds here. And I don't know what kind of birds those are, but they're not seagulls. But anyway, that's the surf conditions today. It's pretty rough out here. It's brown water as far as you could see. I put on my uh, daily post that so is about 400 yards. Uh -uh, it's, it's more like six, seven, 800 yards. It's way, way out there. So I'm gonna put the drone up a little later and show you guys uh, exactly what it looks like. Right now, I am going to show you how to prepare the salted shrimp so you guys can catch more fish out here and your bait will stay on the hook. It's a very simple technique, guys. What you wanna do is have you bucket or some kind of container. I use this little red container and you see how I got bait, salted shrimp on here. All right, you get that. And you wanna pick you up some wild golf shrimp at HEB. I think these bags are like eight or nine bucks or something like that. They're not very expensive. You can also go to Paul's Seafood or any seafood market and get you some golf shrimp. Make sure it's peeled so you don't have to peel it. You can see how it says peeled large. And then you're gonna put all that shrimp in here. You're gonna open up the bag, guys. And you're gonna make sure you don't wanna pour no water in there, so just get your shrimp out. All right, just drop it in here. Just like that. I usually make two bags of this, this is what I usually do. But I only brought one for demonstration purposes. Um, so you spread it all around. Make sure it's thawed out and it's not frozen. So spread it all around like that. Make sure it's not sitting on top of each other. Very simple process, man. And this will catch you a lot of fish. And, and a lot of times you'll, you'll have a fish and you'll still have your shrimp. And what you want to do is you want to use you some kosher salt. You can buy this at HEB for like two bucks a box. And you want to make sure that you cover all your shrimp with the salt. I usually keep like three or four boxes at home. Cover your shrimp completely with salt. I just use the whole box because you could use this salt over and over again. Just like that, guys. Spread it out, make sure it's all there. Right like that. And put your lid on it. Yuck. And then just throw it in the back of your vehicle until you get home, or if you're at home, just throw it in the garage somewhere or in the kitchen, whatever you wanna do. And that right there, guys, that's pretty much it, man. You, you see, I just threw it back here, and you could use this salt over and over again. Uh, I usually use that salt two or three times, maybe four times, and you leave it overnight. Right now, it's probably, it's 220, so by in the morning, it's gonna be ready. And I'm gonna show you how tough this uh, shrimp is, because I actually got some that's already been salted. But you can see how tough it is right here, guys. I mean, it's, it's tough, and it, it, it won't tear easy and it'll stay on that hook so when you're casting way out there you, you're not worried about throwing your shrimp off the reason why i use salted shrimp is that main reason i mean if you guys know if you've used dead shrimp before you put it on there you you wade way out there you're uh freaking almost near the you know you're in between the first and the second gut and you cast out and all your shrimp comes flying off then you got to walk all the way back 
and put some more shrimp on. This will eliminate that and it will eliminate you using, having to use bait thread, uh, which is, to me, I, I tried that and I, I don't like it. But anyways, salted shrimp will catch you any fish out here. You don't want to use like Morton salt that's got, it's iodized or whatever it's called. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you use non-iodized salt. And I'm going to show you the box again. I always use kosher salt and it says this salt does not supply iodine. Uh, so you want to make sure it doesn't have any iodine in the salt when you salt your shrimp. And this is perfect. It's about two bucks. I think that bag of shrimp cost me eight bucks. Uh, I think it's like a pound of shrimp. But I like going to Paul Seafood if I can and get the shrimp there because it's bigger and uh, you get a little bit more than what you would at buying the frozen uh, shrimp at HEB. But that's all you do right there. It's very, very simple. Leave it overnight. Next morning, you know, if you come down here in Port Aransas, you're in a condo and you run to HEB before you get over here and you buy you that, buy you some kosher salt, just put it in the thing and by a morning, you're ready to go, man. Now, you could store this up to six weeks. Uh, I don't think it needs refrigeration, but I always put mine in the refrigerator. And then after six weeks, it starts to go bad. What I do, guys, is I put it in the freezer and uh, it lasts a long time. I mean, the, the salted shrimp I have right now, I've had for two months, maybe more. I'm actually gonna feed the birds right now, that shrimp, because it's old and I'm making some fresh new shrimp. Works good on pompano rigs and stuff like that. Uh, it's perfect, man. You don't have to worry about throwing your shrimp off. And these fish will eat that just like they will regular non-salted shrimp. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of new rod and reel combos that I got today. This is the actual bag of salted shrimp I've had for, I don't know, probably two months, maybe longer. So we're gonna put this out here for the seagulls because they'll eat it. We're on a boat, we're feeling fine. Drinking Tennessee whiskey, a big blue sky. We're going up, we're coming down. There's a party on the water, it's a hell of a time. We're on a boat, we're killing time. This one here is going to be a Penn <coughs> Fierce 3 Limited Edition. Uh, I believe this one here is a seven foot rod. You can run up to a one ounce <coughs> lure, which is about what I run. The only time that I run any uh, thing bigger is gonna be at the jetties when I run a uh, three ounce. But I think this is a seven foot rod here. Brand spanking new and these are about, uh, what's it say? These are $89.99, so that's a good price on this. I wanted to try it out and see how it does. Then we got the big boy here. This is an eight foot rod. And the price on this is $179. This is a spin fish, this is a spin fisher is that a four or five? <clears throat> and this is with an eight foot rod. Uh, again, it says a one ounce lure, but this is pretty nice too. So I'm looking forward to trying these out right here. <clears throat> but you guys can see it right there. I mean, that's a pretty good uh, setup right here. I've heard a lot of good things about these. These, this one's got, this is the 5500, I believe. A pen, Spear Fisher, 5500, yep. <clears throat> and this one here, the uh, Fierce 3 Limited Edition, <clears throat> I believe this is the uh, 4000. Yep, it's the 4000 model. So looking forward to getting some poles in the water someday and using these. But you can see the difference. That one's, well actually that one looks like it's about seven, 7.6 7 and the other one's eight foot. Again, really nice setups and not a whole lot of money. One thing I've learned down here is you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to get some decent setups. Now you don't want to spend 
you know, 60 bucks on a setup like I did on those 12 footers because they're no good now. I, I used them maybe a half a dozen times and, and now they're locked up and I'm just going to have to put them outside and say free or just trash them. Uh, they're not worth working on or doing anything like that. So don't go too cheap when you come out here. Um, this one right here, this little Fierce 3 limited edition, this is going to be used, you know, out here with like 12 pound test, uh, throwing like a one ounce spoon, um, stuff like that. This one here would be good throwing a one ounce spoon as well when you got bigger fish. Like you got some jacks out here and I usually run about 20 pound braided. What are you doing over here, guy? What's he doing? Uh, 20 pound braided I'll run on this right here. And that'll usually bring in, you know, I brought in 35, 40 pound fish on a setup like this. I don't know what this bird's interested in. I guess he's just sitting over here. <laughs> I don't know. But there's lots of shrimp over here they can eat. They just don't want to come near this camera. All right, guys, I'm going to move my camera so you can come over here. But anyway, guys, the surf is kind of messed up, so it's not worth coming out here <clears throat> and trying to surf fish. I see people surf fishing and have stopped and asked a couple of people, and uh, they're not catching anything but hardheads. Pretty bad conditions for surf fishing, I would have to say. Some of the worst I've seen in the month of August since I've been down here. I mean, that's got to be 800 yards or more, maybe 1,000 yards off the beach before you get to clear water. All right, guys, I want to put the drone up and show you a little uh, footage of how dirty the water is and what the surf looks like and stuff like that. As you guys can see, the water is extremely dark, sandy looking color. Let's go out a little bit further. You can see exactly how far out it is. It's a pretty good distance out there, man. You don't get green water until you're at least about a thousand yards off the beach. So let's take a look at the surf. It's pretty rough. See how sandy the water is? And your green water is going to be about right out there. You can see the water change. And this is beach access to uh, towards Fish Pass jetties. And it looks like you got about three sets, pretty good sized sets, three to four feet. And that way would be Fish Pass jetties. So really guys, if you want my personal opinion, it's not a good day to be surf fishing. There is people out here surf fishing, but they're only catching hard eds and stuff like that. I would go back into the bays, but then again, it's a little too hot to be back in the bays. Uh, so I would just, you know, find something else to do. Maybe work on your poles or make some salted shrimp or uh, stuff like that. That's what I would do. Now the beaches in Corpus Christi, they're all packed. Uh, you'd be lucky to find a spot, but if you come out of here, beach access two and go to the right, um, there's a lot more people than what I thought was out here. Appreciate you guys watching my videos and supporting my channel, man. We're about to hit 10,000 subscribers probably in the next month or so, and I really appreciate it, guys. It, it means a lot to me. I work really hard on these videos, and I try to get you guys content even when I, I can't get out here and fish like today. Uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel because as soon as this water clears up, we're gonna be hitting it again. Uh, my goal on this channel is to be doing it full time. That way I can bring you three to five videos a week. So keep, keep subscribing, keep hitting that like button, keep supporting the channel and that will come true and there'll be a lot more content. Anyways, uh, there's a thanks button down below if you want to contribute to the channel, buy a cup of coffee or anything like that. Appreciate you guys watching this video and hopefully this cleared up the uh, salted shrimp because I get a lot of, of uh, people messaging me asking me, you know, what to do, what to use and stuff like that. So now I can just point them to this video. Hopefully this surf will clear up 
you know, within a week or two, it's probably gonna take some kind of front or a low pressure or something. Supposedly it's supposed to be called a, supposedly it's an uplift of the current that's bringing the stuff up from the bottom. And uh, I've never seen it like this in the month of August. It's usually, you know, pretty nice out here in the month of August. This is more like April, March. This is more like March, April, May, uh, and stuff like that. So if you guys are out here fishing, Good luck, hope you catch something, and we'll see you guys next video. Peace, guys. We're chilling out here, ladies in the rear, the feet in the water, top disappears, drinking my